Well, I think the real thing that doctors notice about the funding challenge uh, in the NHS is the constant attention paid to trying to release savings, to trying to release efficiencies, or as many doctors think of it, trying to implement cuts in the health service. Um, I'm a hospital doctor, for example, and many of my colleagues spend much of their time thinking about a thing called the cost improvement program. And the percentage that's applied to that is the percentage that has to be delivered. Heads will roll if it doesn't. Investments won't happen because it uh, because it they can't because they lie outside the CIP. Costs must be released, whatever. Now. I'm not saying in any sense that we work with managers who don't have a regard to quality. Some of the people who have the deepest and keenest thoughts about how to achieve a quality service for our patients are the managers that we work with. But the pressure that they're put under and that gets transmitted down to us in terms of, uh, in terms of trying to match the targets is uh, unremitting in its strength and appears much of the time to be stronger than the pressure on quality. Having said that, of course, you simply can't achieve this without also paying attention to quality of, to quality of outcome. It's just that we don't have the same level of indicators, the same permanency of the bottom line. But what we do have, of course, is responsibility patience. Some people say that in England we just muddle through, and um, I'm not sure that muddling through is really the best way to describe all of this, but it's absolutely the case that we spend our whole professional lives uh, thinking about how to muddle through and achieve all of these various targets. Well, I think in two ways, really, um, and, and both of them are a little bit on the negative side, I'm afraid. One way is because um, the part of the releasing costs from the NHS is in direct pay restraint. Three years now of a pay freeze, two more years of a pay freeze to go, at the very minimum um, in terms of uh, the headline awards being lower than the rate of inflation. Remember, that's lower than the rate of cost and prices inflation. So every doctor, as with every other member of NHS staff, knows that cost and prices are going up, whereas pay is static. And the two together eventually grind you into a sense of feeling we're not quite valued. Now, I know there's a sense of we're all in it together. There's a sense of the wartime spirit. Even the Prime Minister's mentioned that recently and talked about the challenge. Uh, but sometimes it starts to feel a bit personal when you can see uh, the private sector not being treated in the same way with pay awards running at different levels in the private sector than they do in the public services. So one way I think, which has yet to manifest itself fully but does embed itself in the system, is that gradual degradation in morale. The other feeling is of lost opportunities. Um, it becomes much, much more difficult to implement a really good idea in the sense that much of the responsibility of doctors is in the direct delivery of services, of clinical services to patients. But it also rests in examining those services and thinking how can we maintain their quality and more importantly, how can we improve their quality? Improvement tends to require investment. Even if that investment's going to pay off in time, it requires an upfront investment. I don't talk about big investments, I'm talking about the, the little things that make improvements day to day in services but the ability to attract that investment, the ability to make a case for them, becomes much, much more difficult. And eventually people stop coming up with bright ideas because the, 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 the mood sets in across all healthcare staff that, do you know, there's not really much point in bringing up something new because they'll just say there's no money in it. And, and I think those two things are a real um, shame about the way that finances in the health service are working at the moment. To be honest, I don't really think it's possible for the NHS to maintain the same level of care over the next decade. The figures that we've seen at the uh, Nuffield Trust seminar about the funding gap, the extent of the funding gap over the next 10 years with all of the projections about what will happen in the economy and public spending and government policy and so on, is really too big to fill, I believe, without having a fundamental re-examination of the services we offer. One of the problems, of course, is that politicians are pretending that that debate isn't happening or they don't want to take part in it. They say that the NHS is protected. Well, in fiscal terms, you could make a case, but it's not true that services are being protected. Across the country, patients know that in their areas, certain services are being withdrawn, made harder to access. Uh, the, you're having to, on occasion, wait longer for them or they're being abandoned altogether. Uh, people are being told, if you want this, you have to go private. If you want this, I'm sorry, you have to wait until the new financial year. If you want this, you can't have it. The NHS doesn't do it anymore. 
Now some of this is being dressed up with a view to looking at the quality of outcome. Is this service actually important? Does it improve the quality of life? Does it improve medical outcomes? And it's always important to examine that. No doctor would ever examine, I'm sorry, would ever argue that a service that has no impact in terms of positivity should continue for its own sake. But we see services that patients do value and that can be shown to have good outcomes being reduced and removed simply because the local commissioner's budget is too tight.